Hello everyone, and welcome back to our character creator series in Godot 4. In the previous part, we got our character creator to transfer our selected features over to our player character, and now in this part, we will animate our character so that they can play their walk and idle animations irrespective of their chosen features. To animate our character, we will have to use the animation player node. The animation player node allows us to create complex animations using a timeline and keyframes, and each of these keyframes defines the state of an animatable property of a node at a certain point in time. Our animations are based on frames, not the actual content of the sprite sheet. Remember earlier when I said that it matters if your sprite sheets have the same size and layout? Well, since all of our sprite sheets have the same 8x8 frame layout, the animation player only needs to know which frame to display at any given time, regardless of the sprite 2 d node's texture. This means that the actual texture associated with each frame can be changed without affecting the frame's position in the animation sequence. Okay, so you might be a bit confused with all of this knowledge, but I assure you that it will make sense when you actually see it and get to work with it. Without any further dilly-dallying, let's open up our project and in our player scene, let's add a new animation player node. We will create the idle and walk animations for up, down, left, and right directions. If you open up your sprite sheets from any feature, outfit, hair, body, or accessory, you will see that the idle animation for our down direction is in our first frame and on the first row. For our up direction, the idle animation is on the second row on the first frame, our idle animation for the right direction is in the third row, first frame, and our idle animation for our left direction is in the fourth row, first frame. Select your body sprite 2D node and let's have a look at the inspector panel. So we will set the animation row that we want to access in the Y frame coordinate property and the frame that we want to access in the frame property. Okay. So let's create a new animation called Idle Down. Since our idle animation only consists of one frame, remember we said it's on row one, row two, row three, but they all were on the first frame of those rows, we will need to change our animation length to 0.1 seconds because we only have one frame for our idle animations. Now, select your body sprite 2D node. Since our idle down animation is on the first row and on the first frame, we can directly add the Y-frame coordinate to our animation. You can do so by clicking the key icon next to the property. We'll have to do the same for each of our other skeleton parts, so we'll have to add the animation for each of our hair, outfit, and accessory. And that is our idle down animation. Let's create a new animation called Idle Up. We'll also change its animation length to 0.1 seconds because our idle animation only has one frame for any direction. Since our Idle Up animation is on the second row of our sprite sheet and on the first frame, we'll have to increase our Y coordinate property to 1. Once again, we'll have to add the key to our animation for each body part. Thank you. 
And now we have our idle up animation and you can see our body and our hair, our accessories, everything is pointed upwards. Now let's do the same for idle right animation. Since our idle right animation is on the third row and on the first frame, we'll have to increase our Y coordinate property on our Sprite2D nodes to 2. Add the key to your animation and do the same for all of your skeleton parts. As you can see, your player, their body, their hair, everything is now pointed to the right. Finally, let's create our idle left animation. Since our idle left animation is on the fourth row and on the first frame, we'll have to increase our Y coordinate property to 3. Add the key to your animation and do the same for your remaining skeleton parts. Now you have an idle animation to the left. Next, we'll have to create our walk animations for our left, right, up, and down directions. Let's open up our body sprite sheet so that we can have a look. We can see that our walk down animation will be found on the first frame to the sixth frame on the fifth row. Our walk up animation will be found on the first frame to the sixth frame on the sixth row. Our walk right animation will be found on the first frame to the sixth frame on the seventh row. And our walk left animation will be found on the first frame to the sixth frame on the seventh row. Since our body sprite sheet is the same as our hair outfit and accessory sprite sheets, aka they have the same layout and size, it will be the same for all of our other skeleton parts. Let's create a new animation called Walk Down. Since our animation consists of 6 frames, we will have to change our animation length to 0.6 seconds long. Now, select your body sprite and reset your values. Also set your timeline position to the start of the animation. And now, since our walk down animation is on the fifth row, we'll have to increase our Y coordinate property to 4. Now we can just click the key icon next to our frame coordinates up until the animation timeline is full of keyframes. Let's do the same for our remaining skeleton features. You can enable looping so that you can see how this will look when the player walks.
And now you will see that our walk down animation plays and all of our sprites are playing their correct animation frames. Next, let's create our walk up animation, which will also have a length of 0.6 seconds. Select your body sprite and reset your values. and then set your timeline position to the start of the animation. Since our walk up animation is on the sixth row, we'll have to increase our Y coordinate property to five. Just like before, click the key icon until the animation timeline is full of keyframes. Let's do the same for our remaining skeleton features. Now if you enable looping and press play, your walk up animation should play and all of your sprites should play consistently. Next, let's do our walk right animation, which is on the seventh row. Finally, let's do our walk left animation, which can be found on the 8th row, so our Y coordinate should be set to 7. With all of our animations created, we can go ahead and actually play these animations when our player moves in the X and Y directions. Let's open up our player script and we'll start by creating an onReady reference to our animation player node. Then, depending on our input, we will play our idle and walk animations for the determined X and Y directions.
Let's run our scene, and our player should be able to play their animations when they move in the left, right, up, and down positions, regardless of their chosen sprites and features. I just wanted to add a note here. Um, you will see that your eyes are very dark in this um, player screen. And that is because usually when you create a character creator, you'll have a different feature for eyes, which we didn't have. So the eyes would usually be a little bit brighter because you can change it to blue, brown, um, red, black, whatever color eyes you want it to. But we don't have a separate sprite sheet just for eyes. So therefore we don't have an eyes feature and our eyes are being colored in with our body. That's why our eyes get darker, the darker our skin tone is, which you don't want, but this is just a demo character creator and you'll go ahead and just make it your own. As you can see, my players spawned with the features that I added to them and the animation is playing irregardless of what clothes or a hat or hair I have on. The animation plays and depending on the input that I press, the animation plays in that direction and by default, our player idles down. Hopefully you now have a strong base for your character creation system. And you can go ahead and add more customizability like gender or allow them to choose a set of specific traits or whatever. Just go ahead and make it your own. That's it for me for now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.